Ciao friends, Beth with Thimblehooks and today I'm going to show you how to do my version, my little twist on a Catherine's wheel stitch. Always loved this stitch but I didn't like how open it was. It had too many too many gaps in it. It's like, well, I really like this stitch though. It's so cute and it's so fun when you change colors. Looks like this little guy right here. I just love this stitch. So I have a little twist on the way that I do this stitch so that some of these little, there's a few little gaps, but none, none of the really big ones. And I made this absolutely gorgeous super scarf. It's a present, I can't tell you for sure. It's a present. But I made this beautiful super scarf as a gift. And it will be, it will be known soon who gets this one. But see how beautiful this is? I used for this one, I used cupcake, uh, Lime Brand Cupcake, and it was mint chip. And I forced these rows, which means um, for this entire row here, the very first row was all the gray. Even if I still had some gray left over, I just, I just uh, started the next row with the green. And made sure that that whole row was green. So every one of these was a forced row. It was forced striping. So it didn't change color like right here. I didn't want that to happen. I really wanted it to be um, symmetrical. You can actually fold it in half right there. It's perfect. I love this. Thing. I love, 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 love this stitch and I love this pattern. So what I did for this huge thing is I did, let's see. All right, the Catherine's wheel. Here we go. I got to get my parts out here. Catherine's wheel stitch is a, it's a multiple of 10 plus 6 plus 1. So what I did here was I chained 326. 320 is a multiple of 10 plus 6 plus 1. I am not going to do that on this little tutorial. I'm going to change chain 26, not 326. But that's how you start here. 326. So I'm going to put him away and I'm just going to do the 26 so you can see how this one looks. I did the red, white, and blue alternating. I just love how this one turned out. And here's my Karen Simply Soft, all the pastels. I think this is just adorable. I'm really excited to make something big. This is just a little swatch just to see how it looked. And I love this. The colors are just great. And these are all Karen Simply Soft. That was two. My super scarf was Lion Brand Cupcake. I'm going to move these over a little bit here. And I'm going to use, oh, surprise, surprise. I am going to use Karen Simply Soft. Again, this is persimmon. thought this would show up nicely on screen. Let's set him over there. And like I said, multiples of 10 plus 6 plus 1. So I am going to chain 27. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26 and 27. Right, I should say with this I'm using Karen Simply Soft and the the uh, band tells you that you should use a 5 millimeter hook. I went up just a little bit. I go up to 5.5 millimeter. So go up a half go up a half a step. All right, so there's our 27. Now we're going to single crochet all the way down here. 26. So where we're going to start is in this very first very first chain right here. Really the first place that you can you can work. But it's the second chain from the hook and we're going to turn it over and we're going to work in this little back bump. See this little back bump right here. We want to work under him. So this first row can is probably the most time consuming. We're going to do a single crochet in each chain down in that back bump so they'll end up being 26 and I'll meet you back down at the end of the chain. 
Right, here's our last four stitches. I know going under these little bumps. I know they're kind of kind of hard to do, but it's really worth it. It gives you a nice finished edge. You'll be very pleased to have this part done. If you are going to put any type of a border on this little project. Okay, I've got one more stitch. One last stitch right there. That can be the trickiest one because it's right by the slip knot. But then I got him. All right. There we go. Pull him out a little bit. So now we have 26 single crochets. You see that looks a little bit more finished. And it's much easier to get back in there again if you're going to do a border. So that's why I take the extra time. It was really fun when I did 326 for the super scarf. That took a little while, but it was well worth it. Well worth it. Where well worth the extra time just to make sure you have this nice edge. And even if you don't want to put a border on it, this is a, a great finished edge. It looks like real stitches. It has the double Bs there. All right, so the next uh, round two, row two, is just a chain one. We're going to turn, and in that very first stitch, right here, very, very first stitch, is a single crochet. And the next stitch is a double, or is a single crochet. So you got two single crochets. We're going to skip three. Easy to see here. One, two, three. And in this fourth stitch, after you skip three in that fourth stitch, we're going to put seven double crochets in that same stitch. So here goes one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. There we go. So we made a little, a little fan, a little shell. And then we skip three. So one, two, three, and in this fourth stitch, I'm going to do a single crochet there. And in the next one, so there's two. And in the third one, there's three. See? Cute little fan. Or a shell. Or whatever you like to call it. Now we're going to repeat that pattern all the way down. So skip three. One, two, three. And in this one, we're going to do seven double crochets. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we repeat this little pattern of shell, the, the seven double crochets, skip three, three single crochets, keep going all the way down until you come up to the last few stitches. So we're going to skip three, one, two, three, and in this fourth one we're going to do a single crochet. And in the next a single crochet. And in the next. Now you can see we only have four stitches left. So we're going to skip three. Because after you do any of these little activities you have to skip three. So there's one, two, three. So we're in our very, very last stitch we are going to double crochet four doing a half a shell or a half a fan for the edge. So there's one, two, three, and four. There we go. Let's look at this row one. Now there's row one. It has a nice little finished edge. I like doing the first row of single crochet then these little holes right here 
where we did all of the double crochets don't get really really big and stretched out. I just like it this way better. Makes a nice finished edge when I finish if I go all the way around my project with a border of any kind it's very easy. I know where my stitches are. So there's row one. There's a shell and a three, three single crochets, a shell, three single crochets and there's a half a shell. So now we're going to chain one and turn our work for the next one. And this is my little trick. As you can see, this, this area right here is not as skinny as it normally looks if you've seen this shell before, or this stitch before. Because I have a little sneaky trick. We are going to single crochet all the way along this edge. Makes it just a little bit cleaner edges. The stitches are a little cleaner. So here we go. We're going to just do 26 single crochets all the way down to the other end. bit more filled in. I'm just going to use, what is this one? Baby Sunshine. Just so you can see the contrast in the very last stitch. You do half of this stitch because we want to change colors now. So you pull through and before you, when you still have two loops on your hook, you want to change the color don't have to. Looks great all in one color as well. So then we do our chain one. And in this very, very first stitch, again, single crochet. And we're going to go all the way down with Baby Sunshine. And I'll meet you at the other end. Single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch all the way down. in a little bit more because it's not so skinny. I like to see the color stripes instead of having it be so skinny. It's got, just got a little bit more width, but not a lot, just a single crochet. And now it starts to get a little bit more tricky, so hopefully you are well versed in your double crochets and making shells and things. This is not what I would consider a beginner's stitch. It has a little bit more finesse, but give it a try. You'd be surprised how easy the stitch really is if you're if you're comfortable with double crochets and double crochet two together. So for row five, we're just going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. This very first stitch right here, right there, is a single crochet and one more. Now we have to make the bottom part of the wheel. So what we do is, whoopsie, let me get that right, to make the bottom part of the wheel. So we're going to do two single crochets. After you do those single crochets, it's always a chain three. To give yourself a little bit of wiggle room here. And we're going to single or double crochet seven together, which sounds tricky, but it's not. It's really easy. If you know how to do two together, you can do seven together. So what you do is yarn over through the next stitch. Yarn over through, pull through two. Keep these two on your hook and do that until you have seven done which means you will have eight loops on your hook. It should be right here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, one more. 
See, you can always, it's easy to lose count. So you always count, you always count to eight. Make sure you have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight on my hook. That means I did seven together. So we're going to take this little yarn over and go through all of those loops. It can be a little tricky sometimes, but there you go. All right, here's the fun part. Normally you would do a chain here and then two more. And then you get this little big gap right here. I don't like that. So anywhere along here, one of these stitches, whatever, whichever one you can get a hold in, you just want to do a slip stitch. So under and through. Right there. And then in this very last stitch that you use for your crochet seven together, or double crochet seven together, do that again. Just a slip stitch. Pull him through and through. There, now we don't have a big gap, which makes me happy. It took me a while to figure that one out. Because I don't like that hole. But now we're over back where we need to do three single crochets. One, two, and three. After you do the single crochets, you always do these three chains. So there's a chain three. Now we're going to do another one just like this the crochet seven, double crochet seven together. So insert, yarn over, pull through two. Leave those two on your hook. There's two, there's three, four, whoopsie, four, five, six, and seven. Now we should have eight loops on our hook, so let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So yarn over and pull through all eight of those loops. Close it off with a chain one. We want to go in any one of these stitches close to the edge and do a slip stitch. Sometimes there can be a little, little tight on those stitches, but that's fine. You'll get, you'll find one. Doesn't matter which one it is exactly. See, that's tricky, but it's worth it. There's a single, or there's my slip stitch, and then in this very last one, that was the uh, the uh, seventh of the double crochet seven together, another slip stitch. And go single crochet in the next three. And then after you do the single crochets, you always do a chain three. And when you get down to the very end, you see I have one, two, three, four left. We're going to double crochet four together because that's all the four stitches we have because we're doing a half stitch or half of a shawl, half of the bottom of a wheel. So we can't do seven because we only have four stitches, so we're going to do four. One, two, three, and that last one, pull through two, and we have five loops on our hook when we're at the very end. One, two, three, four, five. Pull through all five of those and close it off. There we go. did the bottom half of the wheel. Alright, so there's row, let's uh, consider that one row uh, five. Because we're making the bottom half of the wheel. So there was two single crochets, double crochet seven together, three single crochets, chain three. So you still have a little opening right here, but it's better than having an opening here and an opening here because then it didn't look like a wheel to me. So I had to close this one up because it just got a little bit too big, I thought. So we're going on to round six, or row, not round, this is row six. We're going to keep with our yellow. We already did one chain one to close up these, uh, our double crochet four together. We're going to do one more chain. So technically that was a chain two. Then we're going to turn. 
and in this very top, the very first stitch, I know that a lot of them tell you to go into very, way over here, but I'm going to go in the very top stitch and do four double crochets in this very top stitch right here. See where I am? Four double crochets in that same stitch. One, two, three, and four. Now that is the top half of a half of a wheel. There's the tricky part. Okay, it's not tricky. Just skip over these three chains. Skip over everything until you get to these three right here. The three single crochets that you did right here, we're going to single crochet in those as well. One, two, and three. I need to get a little bit more yarn. This is a brand new skein, so it's still a little tight coming out. All right. So we did our three single crochets in the three single crochets from the other one, from the previous row. Now we have to find the stitch that closed up the bottom half of the wheel, which is right here. I think I made there. I made it a little bit bigger now. Find that hole that was a slip stitch or a chain that uh, closed up the seven double crochet seven togethers. Now I want to crochet double crochet seven of them in that little hole. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's see. I made a wheel. Now it's a circle. That was the top half of the circle. This is the bottom half. Now we just made the top half. So again, very simple. Skip over these three chains into this area where the three single crochets are from the previous row. Single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three. And then again in the closing chain, which is right here. Sometimes it's a little tricky to find. You should be able to find it right there. I want seven double crochets in that same tiny little spot right there. One. Once you get the first one, it's a little easier. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, oops, six, and seven. Need the top half of that wheel. I'm going to skip these three. And we only have two stitches down here. Not three like we have all through the middle, but our ending is going to be two single crochets. One. And two. see that we made our wheels. Now they're round. So cute how that works. Isn't that just cute how that works. And then what I consider that was row six. Now there's row seven. I'm going to chain one turn. Oops. Chain one and turn and single crochet all the way to the end. And in our very last one just do a half because we're going to change colors again. 
All right, so that was the end of row seven. Very easy. Just a whole row of single crochets. Now I'm going to just take this guy back up here. Especially if you are putting on a border, then don't even worry about it. Just make sure that you have enough slack where it doesn't buckle up. So we finished that stitch with the persimmon again, and then we're going to chain one. And turn. I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit here and there. But we're going to go in this very first stitch, the single crochet again. It's a whole row of single crochets. Just to make it a little bit thicker and have in gonna enjoy the colors of the stripes a little bit more that way. little bit more pronounced that way I think. So we're getting close. Almost to the end. One single crochet in every single crochet from the previous row. Very easy to follow. And there's my last one. And you can see that this is just a little bit fatter right in here instead of being so skinny like this. It has a little bit more substance to it. It continues the very nice stripe. You can see the colors more. I just like it better this way. Now it's become one of my favorite stitches again because I've managed to close up these little loops and make this not so skinny. I think that makes the edges look a little bit more finished and a little bit more defined. All right, so after we do, that was row eight, we're going to go on to row nine. Now this is where you'll find, um, mine is a little bit different than other people's. I'm going to chain two right here and turn. And in this very first stitch, very first stitch is where we're going to start, not over here. This does not count as a stitch. I'm going to start in this very, 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 very first stitch. And we are going to double crochet four together. So this very first stitch, we're going to go in, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. We should have five on our hook. One, two, three, four, five. Pull through all of them. Chain one to close. Now, just like we did down here at the bottoms, every time you're on the bottom, you want to do a slip stitch in this wheel on the left-hand side of the wheel somewhere. Wherever you find the happy spot, there's a slip stitch and in this very last, this would be number four of your four, double crochet four together. We're going to do that. So slip stitches, pull through and pull through. Again, that closes up that little hole. I like it better that way. Now we're going to do three single crochets, one in each of the next three stitches. And just like the other row, after the three single crochets, then you do have to do a chain three. I haven't been able to make those go away yet, but that hole, that part of the wheel actually closes up quite nicely, so I wasn't as worried about that one. Now just like down here, we just offset a little bit, we're doing this one, we have to make the bottom part of the wheel, so it's a double crochet seven together. So it's in, pull through two, pull through 
pull through two, pull through two, And this should be number seven, pull through two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to pull yarn over and pull all the way through those eight and chain one to close. And we're going to slip stitch on the left hand side of the wheel. Doesn't matter where you go, as long as you can catch a stitch. Slip stitch there and slip stitch in this very last which was stitch number seven of your double crochet seven together and a slip stitch which is pull through and pull through. Single crochet the next three. So you did three. After those three is always a chain three. And now we're going to double crochet seven together again. Do keep yarning over and pull through. Go over two until you have eight loops on your hook. You should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very nice. Yarn over, pull through all eight of those chain one to close that and we're going to find a stitch on the left hand side to slip stitch into it doesn't matter which one it is and then in the very last right here we're going to slip stitch in there too now we're at the very end all the way down to the end when you come up with your very final two two stitches left single crochet in each And you can see, here we go, single crochet in each one. It's like the opposite of what we did before. See, on this bottom one, we had the half shell over here. Now the half shell's over here. And the single tro two single crochets were here. And now they're over here. So that's lovely. That's what I call row nine. Right, still using the persimmon, chain one and turn. And these two single crochets are each going to get a single crochet again. Single crochet, single crochet. into the closing loop right there, right here, with seven double crochets. There's one, two, once you get the first one started it's way easier, three, four, five, six, and seven. We made the top half of the wheel. Skip these three chains and go over to the single crochets. Single crochets always go on top of single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. Now we have to find the closing loop, which is right there. Found him. Seven double crochets in that closing stitch. One, two, whoopsie. Okay, back to one. Let's try that again. Two, three, four, five, six, oops, I did it again. Six, and seven. 
skip those chains, go over to the single crochets, because single crochets always go on top of single crochets. So one, single crochet, two, and three. Now we're at the end. We're at the edge. So you have to find that closing stitch again. It's right there. Whoopsie. There it is. Right there. We want to go into this guy right here, this little stitch, with four double crochets. Because we're making a half of a wheel here. One, two, three, and four. There you go, there's a half a wheel on this side instead of on this side. Matches up with this guy right here. That part and that part. Alternating. Looking good. This is looking good. Alright, well now we got row 10. Well, that was row 10. Row 11 is going to be a chain one. And then single crochet with the same color all the way down. We 26 single crochets. All the way to the other end. One single crochet in each stitch. One, two, three. All the way down. We get to the very last stitch. Don't complete the stitch because we're going to change back to yellow again. I'll show you one more time how to change colors. And this is row 11, I believe, but technically it is a repeat of row 3. Now we get to start just repeating this pattern. After you do a couple of lines of wheels of these, it really is a no-brainer. You can sit and work this up really, really fast. Especially if you're making something as wide as my super scarf. And there's the very last one, but we're only going to go half because we want to change colors. Oh, that was perfect. I think I just ran out of persimmon. That's great. That was good timing. So we're going to pull through here, but don't make it too... Don't want it to buckle up. Don't want it to pucker. We'll finish that stitch. Two loops with persimmon and then one of the baby sunshine. And a chain one and turn. And then you would continue on with what is row four, which is another line of just single crochet following along. Which would be this right here. Do, 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 do. So what you're doing is making this over again. All right, now you can see that everything beyond this point is just a repeat of rows three through ten. And just keep going as long as you want. This could make a little scarf. This way I made on this one was I made them the long way, so it was 326, 327 starting stitches. And it is super long. This one I just did 26 to show you. But here's the difference between... This is the original way that I learned how to do a Catherine's wheel. See how skinny it is right in here? And there's a big hole right here. And I just love this stitch, but I didn't like those big gaps. So by putting in these two rows, this row of single crochet in the yellow and in the and in the persimmon, just made it a little bit wider. This is a little bit more pronounced. I just like it better that way. I think it looks great. This is the original way. So you can really tell the difference. 
And there's a pink one. I need lots of swatches. I like the way the white and pink showed up. That's really nice. And the red, white, and blue. You can really use any color combination that you want. But there is my little twist on a Catherine's wheel stitch. Thank you for stopping by and supporting my small business. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.